In this presentation, we will work a problem related to whether we should keep equipment or purchase new equipment. We're going to have the information up top. We're going to put that information and build tables for it in Excel down below. If you would rather have pre-formatted worksheets for you, we have those pre-formatted worksheets. If you want to build your own tables, that's what we will do here. We suggest either way that you have the information for a problem up top or that you put the information for a problem or a situation up top in the Excel worksheet in the format of text and then numbers and different cells so that you can reference that information as you put together your work. What we have up top, we've got the book value. It's going to be the 81,000 uh, of our equipment. Note what the book value means. It means the, the cost of the equipment minus the depreciation on the equipment. That's going to be what the book value is on the books. Now notice the book value is a little bit deceiving because it's already been purchased. It's kind of a sunk cost. So when we look at the book value, you got to realize that we're looking at this point going forward and, and remember that you know you can't make decisions about the costs that are sunk or the depreciation or, or any of that uh, kind of items. That's what we need to be aware of with this type of decision-making process. The remaining life is five years. Uh, the cost for the new equipment is going to be 120500 The salvage value, so in other words, if we sell the equipment, we believe we're going to get uh, 80000 for it. And we have the reduced variable cost uh, per year for five years will be 20000 per year. Now note, again, what we're saying here is the reduced ver if we have the new equipment, it's going to be more efficient and therefore reduce the variable costs for the life of 20 years or over 20 years by 20000 a year. Now we're going to do a fairly simplified calculation here because we're not going to be taking into, get into account basically time value of money uh, information or uh, income tax information. So just be aware that those are two factors to take into consideration. We're looking at basically relevant costs at this point in time. So uh, just keep that in mind. What we're going to do is set up our table. So we're going to have the incremental uh, income from replacing the equipment. So we're going to start off with the cost of the new equipment. So what's it going to do if we, if we uh, have new equipment, we're going to have a cost. So I'm going to say the cost of the new equipment is going to be 120,500. I'm going to put that in our worksheet as a negative for a, an outflow, a cost. So I'm going to say negative of this 120,500. Then we're going to say the salvage value is going to be income for us in this scenario because we're going to sell it for 80,000, the old equipment. So we have the salvage value is going to be equal to the 80,000 income. And then we have the reduced uh, variable costs over five years. That's going to be equal to this item. Again, we're not accounting for time value of money here. So we're not trying to amortize the cost over the five years like we possibly could if we were to do this decision more uh, precisely. And we're also not looking into income tax related to depreciation. So just keep that in mind. This is kind of more of a down and dirty type of calculation to give a rough idea if there was a question about it, then of course we would probably want to get into more in depth with these longer term calculations with time value of money, which we'll discuss more at a later time. But here we're just going to say, okay, there's 20,000 times five years, right? So we're going to save 20,000 over five years, which is 100,000 because we'll have more efficient equipment. And so if we sum that up, that's going to be the incremental income. So we'll say that's the incremental income. If we sum this up equals the sum of these items, that's the 59,500. So then what should we do then? The question being, and we're going to say that we should replace the equipment. Why? Because with the salvage value and the reduced cost here, uh, that's overtaking the, the cost of the new equipment. And therefore the decision would be a 59,500 uh, benefit to us again. There's a couple other factors. Once we come up with a decision like this and say, hmm, maybe we should do this, then we will probably break out in, in, into a more detailed calculation in terms of breaking this number out in the time value of money and also seeing what the depreciation effect is on the, um, on the net income as well because we'll have uh, the depreciation on the taxes, the depreciation effect on taxes. Taxes will affect basically the cash flow. But the point of this is, of course, Note that what is not included here is basically the book value. We're not taking into account the book value or the depreciation in and of themselves because they're sunk. We already purchased the equipment. Whatever the book value was or the depreciation was, 
they're not basically cash flow factors at this point in time. Their cash flow factors in the past were just allocating the costs at this point in time. So this book value, notice, has no relevance down here with our decision making as of now going forward. In other words, we're not saying, you know, we're giving up something that is worth 80000 We're just saying, what could we get if we sell the equipment, which happens to be pretty close to the 80000 but not always the case. This number is irrelevant. It's sunk. We're going to say, where are we at this point in time? What's going to be the inflows versus the outflows if we were to remove this equipment and put a new equipment at this point in time? The book value, the depreciation with it, not relevant um, except for tax purposes, which are will affect the taxes in, involved with regard to depreciation, which does affect cash flow. Okay, so we're going to format this table a bit. We're going to say, all right, let's put our cursor here and we're going to go to home tab font, underline that. Put our cursor on this one. We'll go to the home tab font. We'll double underline that. And then we'll make, let's make this top one black and white. So we're going to highlight that home tab font and we'll make it to black and white and then i'm going to select this area of our data we'll go to the home tab font and make that let's say blue i'll go here standard we're going to go to that little blue right there and then we'll go to home tab font and we'll go to the borders and we'll say all borders and i'm going to make this one blue and bordered as well there it is